Monday was out yesterday and we're going over some combine and header calibrations. A little bit of a walk through and overview of the combine to make sure everything is working normally. Combines are new, but I'm sure there'll still be some minor hiccups to sort out when we start, but hopefully not. We'll see how they run. You know, spraying the peas, I originally said could take up to 10 days before harvesting, but it was up there yesterday and they're pretty ripe actually. So it's been seven days today. And the green patches that I went through, those are even, those are even pretty ripe. And so I think we're gonna go through pretty much everything. We're not gonna combine around any of those green patches just go straight through here there's a nice breeze blowing today i was gonna try desiccating some wheat because i haven't started that yet if these peas weren't ready but it's a bit breezy so it should be a good good uh drying day for these peas it was supposed to be fairly warm today plus 28 but it's been cloudy all morning but if these peas are dry enough they should cut okay Usually if it's if it's cool and cloudy, the peas don't cut that well, but we'll see. The combines are still in the job from the yard when I was testing these out and sinking the combines. So it's just showing me on my guidance that black dot is my dad ahead of me. <laughs> Might have to create a new job once we get up in the field instead of using this practice, this practice job. Oh, it says I just passed them. And then, of course, have to set all the threshing clearance and fan speed and rotor speed and all that stuff yet, too. So, a little bit of adjusting when we get there. The wheat could probably be desiccated anytime. It's always ripe here along the road, kind of on this hill. Looks pretty, pretty ripe in that golden color until you get into it. Then there's a little bit of green and green patches, but maybe do these peas for a little bit and then start on that wheat and probably do it all, go straight through spring, desiccating all that wheat, and then there'll be a little bit of a delay in harvest. I can actually grab my book. It has all the harvest settings in it to use as a rough guideline so I know where to be at for these peas. Just in this book, there's the harvest settings for all the crops that we're gonna harvest. So on peas, lots of settings here and then just a range so i'm just trying to trying to drive just a range between between speeds you can run in a lot you can just change from the monitor here the gen 4 uh, monitor but some is um you can't just uh manually outside but we will go for this and Peas say round bar or large bar, so that's good because we kind of have a mixture of both in there. So hopefully our concave or our uh, yeah concave types uh, won't chop up these peas. Hopefully they won't split them too bad and just do a nice a nice clean job of threshing. Headers are in rigid right now, so we got to put them in float so we can put them right down and cut low for these peas. Open up my hopper. Get that guy going. Got an extra mirror here now. Okay, so we can see when green is starting to fill that window. Okay, now what should we do? gonna knock my spread back a little bit separator vein advanced uh, yep I like that 700 yep I think that's good okay let's check out our settings chaffer clearance 16 to 20 and we're at 18, so could just leave that. Sieve clearance, six to 11, and we're at nine. So maybe we'll leave that guy too. We'll leave that just where it is. 
so we can start our separator. So my threshing speed's at 49500. Yeah, a little fast. Okay, let's go like 350 maybe? If it's too fast, these peas, will, there'll be nothing left. Clearance, 15 to 30. Let's see what my dad's running. Maybe let's try like 20. Oh yeah, we, have it, we had it real tight to change the concaves. Fan speed. 850 to 1050. I'm basically just gonna put it right in the middle of its range. Then go from there, let's go 900. Actually, let's go McDavid. Let's try that. If I put the header right down, it kinda unlocks the float mode, it can kind of get jammed up and rigid. See how those, that white bar is down? So that left side is drooping down, same with that right side, just because I'm on the approach of the field here. And then it should kind of shape the land, cut these peas real low. Okay. Oh, look at, okay, so it's working. That's my dad's shading right there. That light blue, and then I think I will be a darker blue. This way. Uh, where was that? You can see his yield. That's crazy. Averaging, oh, look at that, it's changing. Averaging 48 bushels. No, that's not right, bushels per hour. Bushel per acre, 22, 23. Okay, let's try myself. are going in the hopper which is good I feel a lot on the roof which I don't know why but they're shooting right out of the auger onto the roof uh, there's also a few grasshoppers in there as expected we're just trying to clear out a little area if we can uh, bring the trucks up and park park here Okay, so we cut out a little area for the trucks. Uh, so we're gonna go get them now. I think my moisture is a little bit off. It's saying it's really dry. So that might need minor calibrations. And, oh yeah, my yield. Yeah, that's probably pretty close. I think my dab was right around there, maybe a touch higher. So yeah. Shut these guys down and go get some trucks. Tester at home says 13.3, so that's plenty dry. My grandpa switched me off in this combine. I'm gonna be trucking for the day. This truck is almost full, so I'll take it home. 
unload it in the conveyor and take a sample, see what this tests. This is what the peas look like. Uh, they're not cracked at all. They're, they're a little bit small, I'd say, but they look pretty good. The sample looks pretty good. There's some grasshoppers in it. Uh, but it looks pretty clean. Some some pods that are unthreshed a little bit, and then some uh, like thistle thistle leaves. But I'll show you the sample of last year's peas at home in the grain office. And that one looks pretty ugly compared to this. This one doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of green, like these green guys. Like that's not too bad. That'll that'll mature in the bin. First load going home. This is this year's sample. Nice looking peas, not many splits, not many green guys. This is last year's. Yikes. Look at all those splits. And there was lots of green guys in here. You can see they're kind of discolored. Pretty ugly. Pretty good. Well, I guess that means our Max Thresh, Round Bar, Large Wire, Conglomerate Configuration is working not bad. The moisture says 14 and it's up to 27 degrees now. And it's probably good to, you know, just to cool them down. Peas won't take long, one or two nights and they'll be cooled right down. dead so that's good charge that guy up this is the second load a little bit more green in this load me and grandpa were going through some hollows had quite a bit of green material in it be interesting to see if this changes anything i think it's still quite dry I'll say 14.2, I'll say up a little bit. Oh, 14.4. Woo! Beef dip and lemon roasted garden potatoes. Veggies. Oh man. This is it, this is the truck life. Back in the combine, let's see how the fellas did. Um, shared total 78 acres combine between the two of them, that's good. Average moisture 13.4, so we're out by 1% there. Or maybe the moisture test result, who knows. Average yield, yeah, 30, that's what we figured. Is that scroll? No. I think it's more than that 78 acres though. I think that's the, because I switched lines kind of halfway through, so it's more than that. Still gotta figure out how this whole thing works. A few hollows like these, it's a little bit green. You can still see it has that yellow tinge to it, not that golden color like up there. So you just gotta slow down and just put her through. 